What you're seeing there is a combination of low-level moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico and subtropical cirrus. And that's given us that overcast with a watery sky. Here's what it looks like on this scooty for this hour. You can see the subtropical moisture right there topping out at about 7,000 feet or so. Then we get into this dry layer between 10 and 20,000 feet. And above that, we pick up that subtropical cirrus. And that occupies the area between about 20 and 35,000 feet. The surface map on this Friday afternoon continues to be very dynamic. For one, we can see the thickness gradient, that's these dashed red and blue lines, extending from the west coast all the way into the northeastern U.S. And it goes right through the central plains where we have a series of weather systems, one down there in Oklahoma and New Mexico, and the other in Nebraska. With the southern system, we have this complex of thunderstorms stretching from about Oklahoma City over to Indianapolis. The system up to the north, fairly dry, but there is enough isentropic lift up to the north to produce some snow and snow showers. In the western U.S., we have cool air coming down from the Great Basin region. Temperatures this afternoon rather cold. We've got 27 up around Austin, Nevada. 24 up there near Mount Shasta, and winds at Las Vegas are out of the northeast. And that's a sign of winds draining out of the Great Basin region, a very dense air mass in that part of the country, and that gives us kind of a cold pattern, and that can be conducive to Santa Ana winds in the Los Angeles area. It all depends on the pressure gradient. Further south, a strong cold front coming through Arizona, and the Albuquerque area where winds are out of the northwest. And then the dry air, this is post dry line air. It's kind of a hot tropical air mass, but today not so hot. And then we go further out to the east and we get right into that pure tropical air with dew points in the mid 60s. And some evidence of a low level jet feeding that storm complex in Oklahoma. Further up to the north, we've got a fresh polar high coming down out of Saskatchewan, 1034 millibar high, and conditions quite cold, sub-zero at Minot. And that's driving this fresh incursion of cold air into western South Dakota and western Nebraska, 19 there with winds gusting the 48 knots at Rapid City. And you contrast that with a mild 48 degree reading out on the plains of Colorado. Looking out into the Pacific, we've got another storm system lined up off the coast of Washington and Oregon. I did look at the atmospheric river and that appears it's gonna to stay to the south of British Columbia, mostly focusing on that region right there. Up in Alaska, it is rather cold, not bitterly cold, except up in the far northeastern regions. And we've got this triple point in southwestern Alaska. You can see the temperatures near that triple point. Very mild, 32 with almost rain in that part of Alaska. So certainly it has warmed up in that location. And then moving out into the Atlantic and into Canada, we've got a very cold air mass out over Nunavut and Northwest Territories down to minus 36 at whatever station that is, and lots of minus 20s to be found on the weather map. We aren't seeing any brutal cold like minus 40s, but this does indicate that there is some very dense and very cold air in that part of the continent. And some of that sweeping over the Hudson Bay region, you can see blizzard conditions in western Quebec. And on the other side, some tropical air making its way northward. Temperatures almost all the way up to freezing. And right there in that part of Quebec, they are above freezing. Transitional air mass over eastern Quebec. And then we get into the very tropical air out there off Newfoundland. A little bit of mixed precip across St. John's. And then you go further south and we pick up much higher dew points. Dew point right at that location. 45, and that implies higher down to the south. 
Records being broken this afternoon in parts of Texas and on the East Coast as well. Brownsville breaking the record by 2 degrees, expecting 86 this afternoon and 80s all the way up towards Longview, Texas. You can see a smattering of tied records from Louisiana to Florida and some records being shattered from Washington, D.C. to New York JFK Airport. For Saturday, cold air will be advancing southward. We're going to be seeing a cold front roughly about like that, so most of the records or close to the record will be confined to a narrow swath from Galveston to North Carolina. For Sunday, one warm temperature at Vero Beach, Florida, but across the rest of the country, an absence of any records, and that includes record lows. It has been so warm this December that I have not found any record lows to show you. So anyway, let's head to the upper air charts. These are the winds up at 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, showing a progressive pattern. That's divided up into a series of troughs from the central U.S. out towards the North Pacific. And we've got this almost cut off low, almost completely sheared off south of Greenland. The fastest flow located in the northeastern U.S. and the flow much weaker out in the Pacific. And if we go forward into this weekend, into early next week, we can see the flow will be increasing across Alaska, becoming more meridional. So this could shear off this next wave into a cutoff low. In fact, it looks like it's doing it right there around Monday. So the West will be contending with another unsettled pattern for the start of next week. And the flow becoming pretty active out there in the western Canadian and Alaska region. A couple troughs coming in from the northwest. One of them opens up that low just briefly, but it looks like it's forming somewhat of a blocking pattern. And that'll keep most of the U.S. in a zonal flow pattern. And then up in the western part of the continent, a west-northwest prevailing flow. And it's probably not going to change for a while. You can see this is on Christmas. So with troughing out in the western U.S. and ridging out east, I don't see a whole lot of cold weather except maybe in the northern tier states. I'm thinking it's going to be kind of mild for the south and central part of the country and wet out west. Now, as we mentioned, there is a front coming through the southern plains. Let's keep tabs on that and look at the satellite and surface chart. The surface chart showing that cold air spilling south through Enid, Ponca City, almost to Clinton, and over to Tucumcari. And in this part of New Mexico, it's forming a backdoor front. So winds there out of the east. And to the south of that, we've got the mild continental tropical air mass. And as I mentioned, that's not really all that warm. However, it does constitute the air behind the dry line. The dry line itself, where's that located? Well, we've got 48 at Oklahoma City for dew points, 52 at, uh, I don't know what that is, and Muskogee, 56. So probably looking at something like that, you can see the dew points out here in the 30s and in the 60s around Durant and Lake Texoma. There's the storm activity in Oklahoma with plots of lightning. You can see the storms are... Not moving very much. They're training over one another. So that cell right there goes up. And then the next cell down the line moves over the same region. So it's not yet getting that push of cold air, which is hanging back across Ponca City, Clinton, Amarillo. Once that does catch up to the storms, that will kick them down to the south this evening. SPC does have a slight risk for that storm area mostly focusing on the region from Fort Smith down to Ardmore, and then a broad marginal risk from northern Arkansas all the way down towards San Antonio. Hasn't been much in the way of severe weather. You can see one little hell plot around Ada, and no watches in effect. And as everything translates southward, for tomorrow, we're going to be seeing a marginal risk from southern Alabama down towards south Texas.
The high resolution rapid refresh is a good way to see how this all comes together. There's that storm activity in Oklahoma growing upscale along that boundary and then gets undercut by the front and starts moving into the Red River region around 10, 11 p.m. Moving southward and you can see it's all outflow dominant across northeast Texas during the wee hours and then during the daytime. There it is moving into the remainder of Texas. We might as well cover a bit of that dust storm. Let's go to the Four Corners area. We've got Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. We start out on the 14th of December. That's going to be on Tuesday, and we've got the specific system crossing the Rockies. We move forward through the day and into night, and we pick up the infrared channel. And that's that front moving eastward. We go into the day on Wednesday. Already the front is in Colorado. Moving on off to the east and back behind it, very strong northwesterly component. And right about there you can see the dust starting to go up around Kansas. And there it goes. Some dust also being picked up in northeastern Colorado. Let's see if I can move that up into that region. Yeah, that's it right there. So, quite a bit of soil on the move. Let me switch over to Kansas. There's that powerful compact system early on Wednesday. Moving into Kansas, the dust gets picked up, and there's that comet cloud signature. And out ahead of it, a line of storms from Nebraska into the Salina area. So, pretty much all of Kansas getting swept up in that dust and on that last frame there yeah pretty much all of this that is all dust and i would guess a lot of that ended up in missouri and iowa and by the next morning yesterday morning high pressure and you probably noticed a hot spot in kansas that's going to be the fires that ravaged that region. You can see a bit of it right there, some discoloration. But if we go all the way back to the day of the big dust storm, when the winds were raging, look at that right there. That's going to be the fires in Russell County, Kansas. So right there, a couple of very sharp hot spots, obscured by dust, And it looks like right around there, maybe some of them were starting to get going. I don't really know the story of their origin. Kind of looks to me like it might have been sparked by lightning. You can see after those storms pass, yeah, they're definitely there. And that's all for our Friday edition of Forecast Lab. We did have to take Wednesday and Thursday off. I was down in Austin visiting family before this whole Omicron wave gets started. But we will be back to a normal schedule next week and I don't think the Christmas holidays are going to affect that schedule. So hopefully we'll have you here this holiday weekend and we'll see the supporters here on Monday and everybody else here on Wednesday. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.